Hello, everybody. Welcome to Enlightened Up. This is Craig Shoemaker, your host of Enlightened Up and the creator of the Enlightened Up coaching series. So if you want to sign up for that, go to enlightenedup.com. Also, make sure if you enjoy this, you know what, even if you don't enjoy it, just pass the word, rate us, review us, give us a nice review, pass the word along. We really appreciate it because this is what we need to spread out into the world. We need to spread out comedy and laughter and levity and light instead of the darkness. They've already got that down, okay? Every commercial, it's all about here's the ailment you have and here's nine more ailments that you'll get if you take our medicine. No, this is the greatest medicine you can have is laughter. And our guests are all about that as well. Now, today, our guests are, it's unusual what happened. They, they were late. They took an Uber, and the Uber didn't want to take them that far. Some shit like that. I don't know. I felt like a teacher. They were giving me an excuse. <laughs> they were going to give me a, a note from their mom. But they were late. I was happy they were late because I was able to do another podcast, which you'll hear also. But anyway, we have a, a double guest. I tried to book them individually, but they said, no, we're a team. We want to be a team on this. So it's our first team. We made it work. Gordon, our producer, made it work with uh, microphones. They each have a microphone. I want to welcome to the show Mark Saratella and Charles Greaves. Hello, guys. Welcome to Enlightened Up. What's going on, Craig? How are you? All sir? right. How many, uh, which one of you lit up this morning? <laughs> both of us? Not enlightened. Oh, both of you? Okay. Lit up a joint I'm talking about. Oh, anybody? Charles doesn't smoke. Uh, no, you don't I don't smoke, smoke weed. I don't smoke. I never smoked. Never smoked weed or cigarettes so, or crack. Wow. Okay, I've done all. Check, check, check. Really? Perfect. Yeah, don't anymore. Don't anymore. I recently quit just the cigarettes. I quit that. The other I quit a long time ago. But really? Why? Uh, I don't know. When, when a guy paid me, we used to have a thing. This is how long I'm in the business. They used to pay you in white or green. Wow. Um, and that makes uh, sense. so Coke or cash, which is the reason I didn't have money for a while because I, I took the white. And uh, when a guy showed up in my room with a mirror and a. Um, <laughs> A uh, a burner, you know, Got it. and uh, alcohol or whatever he did, razor blade, and it started, that started the crack, and that was not a good thing. No, no. What club pays like that, though, by the way? Back then, it was in Pittsburgh. Okay, cool. What, do you have the booker's info? Or? <laughs> is he still in business? It's just what I Mark t- is trying to figure out. I doubt if he's still in business. You guys are in major business. The reason they wanted to come on together is they do promote one of the top shows. Talk about Enlightened Up. They are bringing the laughter Big time. I saw your lineup, and I, you know, you see my resume is pretty big. I'm going, I don't even know if I qualify, you do for, qualify. The, for these shows. It was a, they have Supernova. Tell us about who inspired it, uh, how was it inspired, and, and uh, what's been happening with it. I'll let Mark start that one off. Uh, started off, um, they just wanted a comedy night. It's the, it's the Houston Brothers. They own Davy Wayne's and No Vacancy. Very artistic bars. They're like, they're into speakeasies, so you kind of, always walk through something to get there. Do you notice, like, if you go into Supernova, it looks like the inside of, like, the Millennium Falcon. Oh. And then that's why you walk in there, and that's why there's that space scene around you. So they're big into the... Um, An experience. Ex- ex- yes, that's, yeah. they use that word all the time. Yeah. And um, it's been that there, and they just... You know, in, in L.A., I feel like we need, we need a new club as well. They, yeah. they want to enter the comedy club kind of business. We went over there mid-pandemic, just, you know, it was legal, but we were risking our lives at one point. And um, then we just started a show, and it became busier and busier. And, you know, soon at, on June 15th, is June 13th the big day in your, with your people, or is June 15th? I don't know, dude. Your people. Yeah. He, uh, for those of you on June audio, 10th. not the video, I think he meant uh, that Charles is... Uh, I might be black. I think that's what Oh, I black. thought you people was from Bronx, from the Bronx. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, yeah, you people. Juneteenth. It is June 19th. Oh, it's June 19th. So yeah. we got to we'll throw a big, but June 15th, things can fully open up for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And then it, we'll, we'll have even more people there. So it's been. No, they that, can't open it up on the black people, black people day. They can't, they can't do that. They're unless like, it's all black people on the show. Unless it's all black people on yeah, the show. That, so, right. <laughs> yeah. Which we can do. Yeah, I'm 14%, by the way. Pardon really? According to my 23 and me. Really? Yeah, I'm sure Charles isn't going. Yeah, I'll invite you to my next reunion. But still, yes, I am. I Perfect. Am, I'm from Ghana. Nice, yeah, nice. Drives my mom nuts. I show her the photo of me I with, see the, it a little with, bit. The, with the face match. She goes, she keeps. You are not from Ghana. Oh my god. My mom's got a little racism in her. They go, Yo, mom, I know I'm not from Ghana. Our ancestors are. I know. That's Yo, I, try I know to that tell I'm not her. from there. She is not having it. She, 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 she <laughs> you're Irish for God's sakes. So uh, anyway, you're a shoemaker. <laughs> that's the part where I'm black. Is the the um, apparently the, the sh- my dad's side of the family. But anyway, I'm real happy to have you guys here because you really are doing something that's right for the world. 
right? Thanks. You've got this this incredible show. So how in the world do you get these big time comics to come out and do this show outdoors between two buildings in Hollywood? It's yeah. the most unusual in the round and you pack it out and you've got the greatest comedians alive. Well, we tell them uh, we can pay you in green or white. <laughs> yes. Has anyone taken white and I want names? Oh, yeah. man. It's a donut from Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's behind door three? It's white. We hand him a donut. You said white. And, you go, <laughs> and they're like, fuck. You, they go, fuck, but do give me the donut. <laughs> yes, I'll take the donut. I'll take anything during COVID. No, um, we've established relationships with these guys, and we've been working with them for a long time. Mark, more so than me, uh, he was doing comedy juice for years um, and spending a ton of time in, you know, different clubs and establishing these relationships um, it's a lot more blackmail than you think, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know things about certain guys. I text them with the photo, <laughs> text it to him. I go, look at you're gonna show up tomorrow. God, I lucked out. I didn't get one of those. Yeah, totally, no, yeah. I just it's better regular edge. booking. <laughs> totally. I, yeah. By the way, to being a comic on the show, it's it's both exciting, exhilarating, but also intimidating. Who yeah, you have to follow, course, who you have to introduce. Mm -hmm. It's really it's it's it's. I don't like to look at comedy as competition. No, but yeah, I know it, what you're saying. But it is a little bit. You want to get as good a reaction as the person before you. Yes. Minimum, yes. Period. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully a little bit more because it's later in the show. And then certain spots have certain, you know, I closed the other night and it went great. But I've closed and, you know, when the show drags. But the other night didn't drag. And then, no, it was great. Yeah, it was great. on that show. Give us the... Let me get, let me pick up the names you're about to drop. Oh my Bill, God. Bill Burr, Tom Segura. Bill Burr and Tom Segura. Bill Burr Two, and Tom Segura. They're yeah. literally stadium acts. Yeah, totally. Tom. And they're playing your place yeah. for the Bill same Burr. amount of money as we all get. Yeah, totally. Bill Burr, Tom Segura. Mm. No, we pay them. Uh, we, we we try we to pay them it. accordingly. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. one of the things too. We feel like. What do you mean we'll, accordingly? You can't pay these guys what they make in a stadium. No, no, no. 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 Well, we pay them what they're worth to yeah. the to oh. the venue, and you know, unlike the clubs where they just you know. Yeah, they're coming around. Like the wording on that, by the way, you got to work on that, Charles. I know. What they're worth. <laughs> so, I know, I know. Okay. That, you know, it's a slave thing. I don't know. I, <laughs> so, You're bringing up a gripe right now because all of a sudden he's from Ghana. All of a sudden he's going to tell you how to act. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, I think what you're trying to say is it's based on what you bring in. You can't right. go dig in your pocket and say, you know, here's what you're worth. You, it's based on the door, the yeah, gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and know? how often you're in L.A.? Because certain guys are only here now two, three weeks a year. So they'll go, you know, we can offer them more because they'll be like, hey, please do our, sh I try to book them first. I just stay on top of things. And also just when, for years and years and years, uh, when I get back off the road, I went on the road a long time with Adam Ray. We were always traveling, I was doing these military tours. Oh. So it felt like I was constantly traveling for about four or five years. But then when I get back on Monday, the comedy store, Monday nights were real good all of a sudden. And then Tuesday nights were the improv and then, you know, the Tuesday night the comedy store. So I basically just would slowly follow these guys. You know, I wanted to go out anyway. That's when I started just drinking way too much. I know it, I know the thing, I know the thing you're talking about. And so I get back on Monday, maybe get something to keep me alive for the, for the next three days. Yeah. I would go from club to club. It cost me a lot of money to get the Rolodex I have, but in the end it was worth it. And now it's years later and I can I'm calm down. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of just going out and getting one headliner and then two, and then also, oh, we have three on a show. And they pass the word around. They say they like work so, with Mark yes. and they and Charles and they say yeah, you got to do this. Because that's what happened with me is I had a couple people, you know, we don't want to be the first. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to be the experiment with some horrible bar situation yes. with blender oh, no, drinks yeah, and it. hecklers. Right. And right. so if we find out as a headliner that you've got your shit together. Yes. You're putting on a professional show. Yes. And with great audiences, yep. that's what we're interested in. We're going to take the gig for a lot less than we make on the road. Yes. That's the thing is but we still you pay can pay the most L.A. In LA. prices. Exactly. We you pay, pay the most in L.A. Yeah. And Shocked yeah. me how much it was. Thank you. Thanks. And we say we were in the comedian customer service business. Yeah. And that's how, how the say? shows are busy. It makes yeah. sense because the comedian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're pitching it to you now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the comedians bring in the people. We understand that. So we got to make sure to pay them according. Like it just makes sense to pay the talent. Yeah. You know, for too long we've been taken advantage of and you know, we're getting paid like ten, fifteen bucks and I'm like, This is ridiculous. Like Yeah. You know, um I'm that's what that's what people get, like comedy store and I don't know what they pay these days for a set, but it's On our you know, improv. Shows? Yeah. You know by the way, the improv, I have checks that have been there literally twenty years that I never even picked right. up. It's totally. not even worth it. No. I don't even know if they're they're good anymore. They're written in like sepia. Or right. Dully, dully. <laughs> so, I have no idea, but that's the way it was for years. They actually had a big, uh, I think in the 70s, there was 
the, the, the protest, right? right? There was totally. a strike. Yeah. You know, so that's comedians are not treated that fairly. And you not, guys treat Especially treated, in LA, which is stupid right. too, because you go, and not to give away too many secrets, but people are like, how oh, the show's so busy. You go, pay more than you. And like, okay. <laughs> I go, no, I'm just paying more than you. And they're like, all right, whatever it is. I go, we're also really diligent though. Do you know what I'm saying? Have to be. And we won't go into all the deeds, things that we're diligent about because we don't want to give away all the company secrets, but whatever. But we're a diligent crew as well. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we have great graphics. You've got a great yes, promo thanks. that you do. Yeah, appreciate it. It's yeah. very consistent. Thanks. And you just look at these faces on there. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. That's like like blow away shows. I mean, you just named one show that has two of the top acts. And I'm in missing, the- I'm missing a few, few people on that. They're major headliners because who else was on that show? Oh, Anthony Jaselnik and uh, Eliza. Eliza was Eliza, on Eliza, yeah, Anthony Jaselnik, yeah. Tom Segura, and Bill Burr. I thought yes. it was Jeselnik. Je- I know. I keep always t- mess I, that I, that I, up. Who's right? Oh, no, he's right. It, it oh, is Jeselnik. Thank you. It is Jeselnik. Right. <laughs> what did I say? Jeselnik? <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, Anthony Jeselnik. I, we, we do have editing if you prefer. <laughs> Edit that out. Don't let them know. Don't let them know. Don't Don't let them know. Listen, the, 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 the advantage that comedians have is working out the material. Totally. Yeah. Do you love the round, by the way? Isn't that great? Have you done the round like that? I've never done that before. Yeah, I have done it. Yeah. Uh, listen, I've done everything, literally. You've done it all? Li- everything. Literally. Half moon? Have you done a half moon? Uh, I, I've, done a, I've, done, I've done full moon, half moon, okay, crescent. Yeah. Hanging from the, the rafters. That's, that's the, so funny you said that. It was exactly where I was going with this. Because a guy yesterday, <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I, we were talking about we're this. He, he, we must be, Donna. Uh, he's booking me on a boat. And he said, I want them to stand because I'll get more people. I said, well, just make theater seating. And he goes, have you done that before? I go, I've done everything. I've, I said, I've actually hung from the rafters like a bat is what I told him. Nice. So I said, if you want to get more people, that's what you do. You hang like a bat. If they need yeah. somebody to book the boat, just give us a call. Well, yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. I mean, I, I will turn you on to the, him. Uh, he's, it's in Seattle. And oh. listen, we're all uh, adjusting with this COVID situation. Yeah. And by the way, I think that helped you. It definitely helped you oh, in yeah. the situation because the more are in town, Looking for outdoor gigs. It's an outdoor gig. Yeah. Looking for gigs, period. I mean, you've got something going there. So, I mean, COVID, you're the only people in comedy that benefited yeah, from Yeah, and we it. never had an outbreak at the club. We never did. That was because I didn't know. You know, it's a virus. So, But we never had the comedians get sick. We were super diligent about the mic, everything else. We Wiping ne- off the mics. Yeah, totally. Having two separate mics. Yeah, totally. And oh, yeah, you did the whole COVID protocol? Yeah, we yeah. did the temperature thing, masks. We did social distancing. It was a lot of work. Here's a trivia question for you. You know who ruined it for us for a while? Who? D.L. Hughley. Oh, oh D. That D. video? Oh, yeah, it totally just went down. You, I, you know, I golf with him. I see him all the time. I, that poor dude. I said, you ruined comedy. He, he ruined really, it. They, they wouldn't was a book turning us. point. That was a turning point. That, that's when all the clubs said, no, 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 no more of this. He went down on the stage. I happen to think it wasn't COVID. And down no, that, goes Hughley. <laughs> that dude is the yeah. hardest down, working yeah. dude. <laughs> And con- like that's he, exactly right. He's exhausted. Exhausted, yeah. bro. So I, I actually know, called him to be on the podcast today. You know, he, but and and he says, uh, "Well, first of all, I will tell you what he said." He goes, "Oh, I can. I'm I'm doing Oprah." I go, oh, "Well, let me get that. <laughs> let me get a crane to get sure. that name you just dropped." Right. But, 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 but the other thing is, I'll call him to go golf, and he goes, "What?" He goes, "I'm out working." <laughs> I said, I, "I'm sorry, but he works all the time. All the yeah. time. Yeah. Dude. I don't get it. I don't have that drive." I, I just do you guys have you guys work all the time are you are you um, that I mean you just have to be on a stage I work all the time we do work yeah. a lot but I mean not like that that guy's on the road like yeah yeah you know 50 out of the 52 weeks you know just he's just constant I know I know I try to golf with him it can only be Mondays or Tuesdays and even then <laughs> even then he's doing his, show, his his podcast radio show he's got something going all the time what drives people both of you are going to do this individually. I know we tried to do you individually on this mm-hmm, podcast, but mm-hmm, you insisted mm-hmm. on being uh, ventriloquist way, and his dummy. I won't say who's which. What's that? <laughs> you got to change that word. It's like do me because that's, kind of, you know, it's a little weird. What no, did I'm, I just, say? I'm just kidding. What did I say? I know you're just kidding. What, what did I say? <laughs> I don't know. You said we got to do you individually. Oh, like, do you? <laughs> yeah, okay. Do you know when you go on a rescue dog uh, website and they say bonded pair? You got to. Yeah. Adopt them together. That's, That's what you? We're like. Okay, yeah. I adopted you together. We come together. Yeah. Well, even that sounded weird. That sounded God weird. Damn, oh, that was man. worse. That was worse than do me. Oh, God, come oh together. God. Come on, Charles. Get on them. I, I know he's your partner. But I'm but bummed. That's, I don't know. That's worse than do me or do you. <laughs> what drives Charles? What drives you, Charles, to oh, be on a stage? To to literally, a stage. emotionally, I want to get what deeper I, here. What if I answer for Charles and then he can answer for me? My answer for oh Charles. Oh, my God. This really is a Let me guess. Let me guess. Let's guess it. Charles. Is driven by stability. 
he wants an acting career in Hollywood. He wants to go on a road, do some headlining gigs. And then he has a great excuse to get away from a wife for a little bit. He's a tra Charles is actually a very traditional man. He's never had a drink or a drug in his entire life. Wow. And so he used to be a professional boxer. So stability and financial stability. Charles, what do you think? Wow. Um, not, deep, not deep enough. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Not deep enough. You're right. It's not deep enough. Not deep enough. I'm driving you. Driving you. To a stage. Um, I'm talking about like, on the boat. Em emotionally. Like, what is it that motivates you that says, I have to be on a stage. This will do this for me if I go on that stage. Um, you know what? I tr Here's a weird thing about that. I never really answered that question because whatever it is, I don't want to pick at it. I don't want to like, I'm just I like, do. Let me, let me just, <laughs> let me just go. But I, I mean, we could try to answer it. Yeah. Now, let's try to answer it. Let's get to the answer. Yeah. Let's get to um, it. Yeah. The molten lava. Uh, you know, I just, there's just something about, there's just something about people laughing at something that, you know, that you put so much work into that. It, it changes you when you get off the stage. Like every time I'm all, I get off the stage, I feel a little different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I like that feeling because I'm like, all right, I did something. I did something. So good. this is your drug. You're getting a hit. Essentially, yeah. You're getting a hit. You know, because. You, you, you have that feeling that happens when they laugh with you or at you or whatever it is. Whatever. You're getting that hit. And that's the addictive hit that drives you to get out another stage and another stage. And whenever I get off stage and I had a great set, I feel a little horny. No lie. <laughs> True story. I'm like, oh my god, this was great. I gotta go fuck right now. Like, this is. I'm usually the happen. first person you see when you get off. Dude. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's that's tough. why you're a duo today. Yeah, you hit it well. You hit it well. I never noticed. I hope that. you're not horny right now. There's no, nothing around. No, here I'm for not you. on stage. I'm good. Well, this is a stage. You have a microphone. I mean, sure. and You're killing right now. Uh, but I do like to go deeper a bit because um, I think that that's important. Pick away, man. Go ahead. I'm good with it. I think it's important that we go. All right, we're going to go to Mark now. So you've had time to contemplate your answer. Right. And would you like Charles to answer for yes, you? Yes, Charles, you answer. Yes. You no, answer absolutely. first. Uh, answer first. What drives Mark what to get to drives a stage? Mark? Oh, my God. Uh, you know what drives this guy? Um, one word. Yeah? Boobies. Really? There it is. That's so, it. so you believe the access to the boobies That's is it. through the avenue of a stage, a comedy stage? That certainly was part of it. Uh, okay, <laughs> you say was part of it in past I, tense. I guess it is still sometimes. You know, um, yeah. I mean, certainly it was benefit of the early on, huh? That threw me for a loop. See how you threw me for a loop? You see? Good. The see, this is what the show is about. We can't yeah. go normal. Hey, what's your resume? Nah, no. I don't give a shit. I care about what drives us to do this. I have certain okay. ways, certain things that have driven me in the past and certain things that drive me in the current. Impact. You know, impact. I want to have an impact in some way. You want to have an impact in life yeah. in some way. Let's go deeper than that. Why do you want to have an impact? History major. What is that? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Want something written down. There want it is. Want something in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah? Yeah. I want to be remembered, you know. So you want to be remembered. You both want to be remembered and have a legacy. You want to leave yeah. a legacy. Yes. And with Either one of code, you have kids. Any, each, any of you have kids? I do. I have one. You have one kid. I have another on the way. So you want to pass this on, this legacy. Dad had an impact. Dad had an impact. People know who dad is. Um, why, you know, do you, why do they need to know who you are? Um, you know what? I, that's a strange question. Not strange. That's, it's strange to delve into because I never really, I never really, you know, got into why, like why I want people to know who I am, but there's just something about being, I was the underdog a lot growing up. There you go. Now we're getting somewhere. I was the underdog yeah, growing up a go. lot. There we go. And you know, I was picked on. Oh, oh uh, shit. Oh yeah, dude. Are you finding this that. for the first time, Mark? For the first time. This yeah. is great. Okay. I was picked on a lot. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I, look, I had a lot of friends. I wasn't like, you know, a, a loser or anything. It's just that I, I, gotcha. was, I was picked on for my head size. I was picked on wow. because, oh, I'm we not really, kidding. We dude. really like, are all related, the time, bro. All the time. Like, We're related. I got an eight. Oh, my God. <laughs> no hat fits. Eight. Oh, it's an wow. eight. It's an Give eight. it to me for a second. Do you mind if I wear it for a second? I, it, it still won't fit me. It fits me like a yarmulke, I guarantee it. There's no, there's no way. There's no way. 
Wow, a hat that fits. Size Where'd you eight, get baby. this? Size eight. Us baby. big head people need to stick together. Oh my god, that didn't Never sound right that. either, did it? <laughs> but you know, because it, 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 it looks proportionate to my body now. But as a kid, like I got picked on right. a lot. It's like a pumpkin on a broomstick. And if you if you notice, if you ever see me out, I always have a hat on because I developed a love. Like I do, at first, it was a dependency for hats, right? Because yeah. I was like, I got to cover my head. I don't want people to see my head. Wow. And then, um, yeah, I know, it's crazy. I love that Mark is finding <laughs> He's all He's so this. surprised. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's why you came in as a duo here. You and I was it. born in Alaska. Did you know that? You see? You learn something new every day. Yes. Uh, but no, yeah, so. And they have uh, small heads in Alaska, so you must have really stood I out. Stuck, stuck you must out. have been Jupiter next to Mercury wow. up there. Craig, you were bringing up some terrible memories. Listen, I have them. <laughs> I'm just sharing. These are my memories, too. Look at the size of my head. I don't see it, dude. What? I don't see it. Oh, my God. It's gigantic. I can oh hardly, God. you know, gravity takes over. I, I, I have to, this is why I have horrible posture. Do you have a, like a stand that I, I, you lay your head on? Is that what you're saying? I have my head on a stand. A kick stand for your head? Like, I actually see other big right head here. people. You know how you drive a unique car and if yeah. you guys have a unique car, you high beam them? Like if you see <laughs> another one. Hey, hey. I do it with big head people. <laughs> I knew I liked you right away, Charles. I gave you the, I gave you the, <laughs> gotcha. Oh, I see it. I see a big head. I recognize, I recognize, I see you. So this is great. So we're going a little deeper than, than usual on why you're doing this. So it comes from, by the way, I teach this kind of stuff. No, no. Yes, yes I do. I, I, I teach this it. kind of stuff where you, you, you get down to the, I'm just getting it for boobies. So thank you, Shallow. Um, so it's like there is a deeper reason coming from childhood why we do it. It comes from pain, suffering. That's what leads us to the stage many times. So people have asked me, what do comedians have in common? Do they have pain in common? Well, I'd say Jerry Seinfeld, maybe not. Seems right. to be he had a pretty good life. You know, this is why he says he's actually anti-hug. Where I'm like, somebody hug me or laugh at me. You know, you want yeah. that love. You know, you're driven by that. So, so that's how it worked out for you. Funny and you, you became a boxer my, also. Jerry was my favorite comedian. Really? Yeah, I love that dude, man. What? It's hilarious. He's a tech. He's a technician. Yes, but he's a specialist. He's amazing. He's a specialist, but he doesn't have that. You don't feel his pain. No, so he's a different kind of comic in that way. We all have yeah. different places that we come from. If I was interviewing him, you'd have a whole other reason. Yeah, well, no. it because I like. Well, here's the thing: to make it, people laugh. Is it that simple? I mean, you know, he can simplify it like that. But I believe that a lot of us are doing this for very, very uh, deep reasons that propel us to get on a stage. Look at what we do. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most difficult things. People think number one fear in life is speaking in front of people and making them laugh. Yeah. Add yeah. traveling and you know, all of that goes with it. Add all that. That's it's just one like of the most Jerry's difficult joke. things. What's that? Jerry's joke. He's like, you know, the number one fear is public speaking. He's like, number two is death. He's like, so at a funeral, you'd rather be in the casket yeah. than delivering a eulogy. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Um, but no, I think that I think that it's complex. It's not just one thing. Of course, right? not. I love I love um, being on stage and seeing people's faces. I'm a people person, you know. Um, but you know, there was a lot of growing up. There was a lot of pain as far as like being picked on. Ooh, coffee yeah. for you, Mark. Nice. Look at that. I don't look at the service. That's, Craig. On, that's on my credit. You're on a different right level there. right now. It is. <laughs> a whole other. Have I gone up a few steps with you? A few steps, right there, man. <laughs> just I was thought, like, "Damn!" I was this fifteen-minute guy that goes on after Chris Franjol. That's all I was. That to was you. it. <laughs> How great was Chris that night? By Chris, the way, Chris is amazing. By the way, thanks to your show, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I have a lot of insecurities as well as, that we all do. That's what I'm trying to pick at right now. And one of mine is the not being in the club. So twice in a row. I did your oh, high-level yeah. shows, and I'm backstage. And i to be honest with you, it was way better than I thought. Jill was like Jill Kimmel. She's the one to turn me on to you. Yep. She was like my sponsor, my backstage sponsor. That's funny. She had to be with me <laughs> and guide me through. She goes, Shoemaker, would you just shut up with your insecurities so and go back there? She goes, people love you. And I go back and I go, hey, man, you're OG and all this. And it really made me feel good. Right. I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm on the team that I was never on. We'll get you another date within the, in the next seven days or so. We'll get you back. I was thinking end. seven minutes, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> so, so uh, no, I mean, in the next week, you'll be on the show. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Wednesday. Actually, we should do it before we leave. We should plug it. But you continue with Charles. Okay. Well, what I was saying is, so that's one of the things that drives me is, you know, to be loved. 
to be loved, to yeah. be accepted, because was not as a child. So I think that's you're breaking that down too. You weren't loved and accepted for your head. You know, or, or <laughs> <laughs> well, so that you know, I I developed I developed a love for hats. What's well, it was like I said, if at first it was I needed to wear a hat. And then I just developed a love for it because I was I love fashion, um, so I was you know I have a hat to match every outfit. And, Good for you. Um, You're but gonna have the, to you turn know. me on to the big hat. Oh, big dude, hat size store. eight, bro. That's it. Nobody has an eight except yeah. for us. You got to order it online, baby. Yeah, they, they paper mache a hot air balloon. Damn, they base it on dude. That. Jesus they base Christ. It on that. <laughs> My sister used to call me the human eclipse. It's high school she would, all she'd over be again. Sun, she'd be sunning, and she'd go get out of the way. I would walk by, <laughs> wow. and the sun would be completely blocked by my head. <laughs> wow. So, and That's as fine. opposed to Mark, has a small head. Tiny head. Right? Tiny right head. So it's amazing that you guys uh, got yeah. together. It was, a, it was destiny. I'm finding you a date, by the way. I'm not on my phone. No, 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 no. Don't, don't find me a date. I want to go deeper with you. We're Take yourself off that damn phone. I want to this keep This is the on. deepness. I'm going to peel away. I got to say I have ADHD. That's I wanna, what I'm looking I wanna, at here. Okay. So okay, it's a way. So Done. this is a way to deal with your... So, Mark, as a child, where did you grow up? Upstate New York. Upstate New York, okay. Albany. Became a Yankees fan. Became a Yankees fan. Celtics as well. Celtics and Yankees. Yankees Celtics. That'll get your ass kicked. They so will, maybe uh, that has something to do with why you're it. on stage. Do you think that comedy is a great deflection that you can kind of, like if you're about to get into a fight, I don't know if you, I fought a lot as a kid. Yes, totally. And comedy breaks it up, right? Yeah, a little bit. It, I, maybe. I just enjoyed being funny. I think that no, I didn't really have that much darkness. I do have six total parents, three step parents on each side, but everyone what? treated everyone treated me well though. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, never felt unloved, never was shunned, none of that stuff. Beaten? Never, nothing. No, no, oh, never. Oh God, never once. I but, used to like you until this interview. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, I don't like happy people. No, I'm just yeah, no. kidding. But I, it's not that uh, you know. Then, but there was definitely a lot of it was definitely a lot of drama, chaos, but it wasn't. Had ever directed towards me? Does that make sense? Okay. How about rejection from girls in high school? Yes, you had of course. Who that? didn't have that? What oh, the fuck did that mean, it? motherfucker? Did you hear that? <laughs> the fuck was <laughs> he directed no, that no, right no, at no, you? No, no, that, that, <laughs> no, that didn't I was, no, I was hundred percent only 100%. because the question came up. And it's 100%. A, I was shot down all the time. And I already a, knew I wanted a big to be a motivator, a huge motivator. Because girls say they want a sense of humor, so you're not going to be the star athlete. I did no. say that direct to you, by the way. I was the backup, backup on the football team. Never got in, but all my friends played. They all definitely got laid. I didn't, but I was also a late bloomer. I was 110 pounds until his mid junior year. And then I graduated my senior year. There's another motivation. Totally. I just I wasn't even ready for that type of thing. I thought I was, and I wanted to get laid, but like it was not. I remember being at a couple girls' houses, and they were like hitting on me. I was like shaking, like <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't do anything. I was like, I, to, I didn't know what to do, so I just wasn't ready. So yeah, there was that, and certainly. Do you want to call them now that you're famous? Do you want yes, to call them? Yes, a couple of them. I have, of course. I bet you they're uh, yes, they're on the list. It, sometimes it's 15 years later. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's 25. And they're going, wow, you're not 110 pounds anymore. No, yeah, totally. I just made out with the girl. I was 92 yeah. pounds in high school. Wow. Five foot one. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah, really. The whole time. So now I want to call them all. I know, totally. And I'll go, hey, Five, I, I sprouted. Yeah, I actually, yeah. I grew so fast. I have Osgood Schlatter's disease. It's these giant lumps in my knees. That's how fast I grew. Seven inches in one summer. Wow. Damn. It was crazy. I was like watching it happen. But then that crazy. turned me into like this puppy that would like whack things. Oh, yeah, you know, I didn't know where my limbs were going and yep. the big head going. Those are so funny, the Doberman Pinscher puppies at the exactly. park. Real, right. like, real loves, <laughs> yeah, totally. They don't know what to do with them. That's so funny. Do you have a dog? Uh, yeah. You say the park. Do you have a dog? Yeah, I have a. That's uh, a great chick magnet. I'm sure is. that's why you bought it. Totally. I, have a, a bise- I have a bisexual Pisces. <laughs> you know I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> That's why I tell people at the park. You have a little chihuahua. He's definitely my little soulmate. I'll say you this. do not have a chihuahua. Yeah, totally, yeah. You do. Chihuahua, chihuahua it's something. I'd, if you want to be guessed, I'd say rat terrier. But I, my last dog was a boxer, and I was looking on boxer rescue websites just in the middle of the night, drunk, like, I'm going to get a boxer again. Knowing full I couldn't have a boxer. And then they uploaded his. They must. They were smart. His photo was just on this boxer rescue website. And I was like, who is this guy? And I went and met him. They were like, do you want to take him? I was like, for a walk, see if you can connect out. No, I'll just take him. He's like, you have to, they, well, they make you wait a couple days to make sure it's on impulse purchase, and they also come to your home. Uh-huh. And so I had to rent a house and fucking make up a fake home. No kidding. <laughs> he just came to my house. Rent I, the, I, I had to rent the wife. Uh, I did that with my adopted son. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they that's came. a kid, though. That's a human. I didn't. You do adopted it for, a kid? Yeah. I okay, did. we'll get into that. Yeah. Okay. Hold one on. of them. One of them. Nice. I have th- three biological and one adopted. 
There but they go. put you through a process. Fuck yeah, as well they should. As well they should. So I did a whole fake thing. I actually, yeah. to tell you the truth, between us and whoever's listening, the five people, uh, <laughs> I had, seven I was, now. I was fighting. There was my ex-wife at the time, and we never got along. So we actually did have to pretend that we got along when the interviewers came over. That's funny. That's We'd be crazy. just fighting. It's like, hello, hello, we got to tidy this one up. Oh, we're you know they hold get hands. The, you know they get in the car and they go, those two people hate each other, but fuck it. One, <laughs> one of them will take the kid. <laughs> we got to get this kid out of here. He needs, yeah. a, he needs a home. Because it doesn't mean you're, you're a bad person you don't get along. Who the f- I, I, haven't been, I haven't been on a third date since 2006. I was engaged, broke up, and was just like, I need some oh, time. Oh, whoa, whoa. I need some time. I know you have a, not been on a third date since 2006. 2006. You see what you just did? Yeah, I feel like I have a collective. Uh, what I did was I clarified, just to be clear. You on, just pulled a scab off. Go for it. Okay, well, yes. Just, well, LA is so time consuming, <laughs> and it's like, and there's so many crazy people here, too, and I just go, nope, nope, nope. No, I know what I'm not looking for, that's for sure. Do you know what I'm saying? So three dates is all you last. Except with a... This I, is not... By the way, this is not good for your profile. No, I'm going to no, tell you no, that no, right no. now. Anyone listening... Yeah. You think there's a woman listening going, I'm That's looking for a three-date special. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. I feel that right now. <laughs> because they can look at it as a challenge. If I make it to four, I am the I'm shit. I'm the shit. Yeah. Exactly. Anyone who makes it to four, do you tell them this, by the way, on no. any dates? No. Any of the three dates, do you say, I've only made it three dates? Yeah, this, this is a record. I was with that porn star for 10 months. Remember her? That, Did you meet yeah. her? Uh, Did I didn't. Not. I saw her, but I didn't meet her. Penthouse Pet of the Year. She was great. That, that's wait wait a minute. Were you were with a porn star. For 10 months. That was, that was I, I, three, I've three, never three been able ago. to do that. I just think no, about how many, you know... No, it did. Yeah, for sure. It was definitely. Let's just say it was dark. It's kind of like Disneyland. It's like I know how many people been on this ride. It's pretty Lots dirty. Of, it was fun <laughs> while it la- It was a fun nine. Was months. it? Was it really? Even the last one. Yeah, totally fun. You know, listen. I I'm not gonna I get into your junk. Into I'm not getting into your junk. But weren't you thinking to yourself? You know, I am not. You know, yeah. she's screaming right now. I would yeah. think she's acting. Jeff Ross has that great joke. He goes, "I wanted to date a porn star." She's like, "I'm working." Tuesday through Saturday. You want to hang out Sunday? He goes, how about Monday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's, uh, I wasn't into it like that. I wasn't like, oh, it's hot. You were there. But I don't know. It's, you know, in L.A., sometimes you just party and go, I'm just going to roll with this as far as I can. I went long. It was far. Nice. That's, well, nine months. That's, that's yeah, a, totally. a record for you. I'm cared surprised you're not married. Cared for her. Still do. Are, are, yeah. Oh, you still care for her? So I send her letters every day. Oh, no, I kidding. thought you meant care for her like you send her money. <laughs> Oh, no. my gosh. No, no, not that. <laughs> Never. No, Please no. don't do that. Well, no, they have money. They have their own money. They don't need yours. Porn stars? Definitely. Come They've on. run dry. No. And that's no, no, no pun intended. It is boomer bust. I'll give you that. There was some times where it was like a significant amount of money. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm friends with the... I was friends with Jenna Jameson would come to all my concerts yeah, in, so you in see. Arizona. Yeah, I've seen it way up here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Club Jenna and everything else. 100%. And now... Yeah. 100%. I don't think that's... Uh, I think it's that not, club is closed. Uh, yeah, it's not... It's certainly not... It's certainly like comedy in that way. Well, they don't have the shelf life we have. No, we got no. lots of shelf life. We yeah. have lots of shelf life. Be ugly as fuck. At eighty years old, I'll be out there still doing it. <laughs> I'm almost Jesus there. Christ. <laughs> yeah, I it's I've been at it a long time. It's uh, I've how seen long, how, how long have you been doing this, Craig? Let me guess. Let me since, guess. since uh, junior year of high school. Come on, seven years. That was, that was you've been my doing debut. It? <laughs> you look great. My debut was uh, <laughs> was junior year of high school, and uh, Ava Tamini's backyard. Okay. And uh, what was your debut, Mark? Debut in comedy. This is gonna sound crazy. It was the same backyard. <laughs> Ava Tamini. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and you were after her boobies. Yeah, she's a, we all were. Yeah, she books it. She's we still all, booking it. <laughs> Ava died. I hate to bring that oh one my down. God. Thanks. Yes, Thanks I stayed for that. in touch with Ava. You know, it's weird. And she did not, pass yeah. away, but uh, but yeah. that was the first boobs I ever had. So I, oh, really? I, same motivation. Clap it up for Craig, everybody. Clap it up for Craig and Ava Tamini. So Tamini's, where was this? This is uh, this is in Philadelphia, outside Philadelphia. She lived two doors down. Her mom was drunk in the basement, so I was able to go to mom's room and you know do the thing there. And uh, and and, wow. and, and with this podcast is not about me and wow. Ava Tamini. I want to hear about your debut, Mark. Where was it? Describe it to us, and how did it go? San Diego Comedy Store, La Jolla Store. What? Your debut was in a actual yeah, totally. famous comedy club? Well, the people were talking about me. They wanted me to go on. No, they, they, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the only game There was in like town. a petition to have you on. There That's how petition. much, okay, in, in your town. The people cried for their champion, and okay. then I showed up. <laughs> and then I showed up with the second place trophy. No, I... Um, just always wanted to do it. I lived in upstate. It was freezing. I remember looking, going, what's across country? I go, San Diego. I go, I'm going to go there eventually. But I went to college at Chapel Hill originally. Mm. And then I went, moved 
moved to San Diego, went to graduate school, just was like, is there a comedy club here? The only comedy show in San Diego at the time was the La Jolla Comedy Store. Yeah. And they let you start on Sunday nights. And so they had me start on Monday nights. No, I'm kidding. They let you start yeah. on Sunday nights. And you booked it two weeks in advance. You got three minutes. You had to bring six people. I think I brought like 14. Oh, those are called bringer shows. Right, no, but it's a, it's like a, it, it is, yeah, because you, you could also just pay to go on if you wanted. So I guess. Well, they I, have paid, you pay to go on? You could, because you. Oh, that that's a, something had, that's changed for me through yeah, the years. Totally. I've not, I didn't go through that. I had no problem. There were no comedians when was I was back doing comedy. Time. I was just, ha- it was, it didn't feel like at the time, and they weren't at the time. It was like you paid for, if you either had four people show up or you, ha- you had to pay for the tickets that didn't. And you go, it's Sunday night. I had no problem with it because a couple times I did pay for all four. And then like 40, I think it was 40 bucks. Went, and your no friends way. are supporting you and laughing. Totally. And then also, you know, it's they, they get, the GM has to justify them being open on a Sunday. That I've had many problems with many clubs, but that yeah. wasn't one of them. So I went up there and, um, and, uh, you, and just, it went well. It went okay. No, no, it went terrible. Oh, it did? I'm sure. Oh, God, Charles, I was hoping he had some suffering in his life. Oh, no. My God. I, I was starting to get sick of this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was, <laughs> oh, I have great step parents. No, I was not a natural. Oh, guy. I was never no. hit as a kid. I was. <laughs> this is pre internet, too, because it was 1999. So, like, you had like three, four tapes of guys that you could watch Richard Pryor, yeah. Andrew Dice Clay. So, I, Sam Kinison, I just thought it'd be like Sam Kinison. I remember he's screaming a lot <laughs> about like if I was on the prices, right? But, but we had, I didn't go, I got laughs, laughs and everything. And my afterwards, my friends were like, that went as good as, you know, it went as good as could be expected. And I wasn't yeah. disappointed. And then I remember we're not drinking. And I just was like, okay, I'm, I'm this, in this for life for sure. I already wow, knew that. Wow. You knew that moment. I knew when I was seven years old, actually, because I, had, I got food poisoning at a, a friend's birthday party. It was Saturday night. And I was eating like the egg rolls late, and then I went home on Saturday night. You know, you, you know your friends' birthday parties when you're a kid just turn into your parents' parties. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, sure. So they're all drinking. They go to bed. They're also 28 years old. I'm seven, so my mom. No, my mom is 26. So I'm up. They go to bed. They're like, "Can we be okay, baby?" I was like, "Oh shit!" So I was up all night alone. And Saturday Night Live came on, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And I remember being a little kid and being like, "I can't laugh right now because I'm so sick, but I know this is funny." And, yeah. I, and I go, I want to do whatever this is. And then the next week, I remember showing my friends, like, there was a show. It's Saturday night. It's very late. <laughs> very late. <laughs> I go, we had to stay up a long. Do you remember like, the cast? Yeah, I remember the sketch. I remember, absolutely. I remember the sketch. It was w- two wild and crazy guys. I could probably find out the exact night if I found out about this kid's birthday, who I'm still in touch with. And I remember it being like in October. That's Steve Martin, Dan Aykroyd. Steve Ackroyd. Martin. Da- yeah, that, it was them. I, I don't think Dan Aykroyd was on the cast because didn't that come in late? It, I know the year was 1983 in October. And I want to say that. I remember a sketch of two security guards. I want to say it was Martin Short was the. I want to say eighty three. I want to say Martin Short was the. That's host. I think the time that was their worst year. Yeah, they I mean, almost got canceled. There was a new producer called yes. Gene Dominion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think it was actually Robert Downey Jr. was in that yeah. cast. <sighs> Julie Louise Dreyfus was in that wow. cast. It might have been eighty four. Right. Whatever it was, there was one time. Where the original cast was gone. I don't think it was that because I remember this being funny. I remember Steve. No, nah, Wild and Crazy Guys was in their heyday. Yeah, for sure. And I remember that. Being, Wild and Crazy Guys. Yeah, yeah I'm going to yeah. look this up while you talk you to look, Charles. Okay, Charles, Charles I'm going to find out from stuff. Charles. Where did you start? Where's your very your debut in comedy? Ex- explain the experience of that. What that's oh, like for man. people. Um, the first time that I was on stage to perform, that it, and it wasn't like some stupid backyard whatever it was um and when i was in college ithaca college um i want to say it was like oh three or oh four um it's a great school for communications i almost went yes it is a great school too fucking cold i don't know oh my god bro yeah it was jesus christ it snowed my freshman year in august i'm like what the fuck am i doing here (laughs) you gotta wear crazy three hats there that'll make you happy I tell a joke about it, but it's, you know, it's true story. Like, you know, I get to Ithaca, like, cause I, I had gotten a brochure from my wrestling coach and he's like, oh man, this is where I, this is my alma mater. You should go here. And I saw it was like black people and white people, Asian people all getting along <laughs> great. And I'm like, this is amazing. And then I get up there and I failed my first semester cause I spent half the time looking for the other black people on the damn brochure. <laughs> it didn't fucking exist. I was like, what is going on? And I was like, tell they, people. They brought, they brought in people from Grambling. Just yeah. For the, just for the. Just for the poster. It was just like a Polaroid of me, and they, like, altered it. And I was like, what the fuck? But, no, it was crazy. I Yeah, I go to school there, and, I'm you know, I'm just mesmerized. But I'm like, 
you know, they should have a sign when you drive in, like, welcome to Ithaca, where the ground is cold and white and just like all the people, like, <laughs> because that was Ithaca. But no. It, I've been there, man. It's nice weather if you're a nipple, uh, which, which would appear, <laughs> that would appear to Mar- uh, appeal to Mark. Uh, but no, it was, it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, you know, I had a good experience there. Um, you know, I. That's your debut in comedy. That was my there. debut in Did comedy. Did they have like but, a comedy but, competition or what? what no, kind of, it was just what like, you, you know, there was a comedy, cl- like a comedy club. On, um, I say a club, but it was like a club of people, you know, like. On the campus. On, on the campus. Like that, minoring that, in comedy. That had like a comedy thing. And yeah. they put together something at a, you know, at this place and I did it there. And I didn't announce any anything. I just went and did it because I had been writing jokes forever. And, uh, that, you know, funny thing is like my dad growing up, my dad showed me comedy and my, my older brother showed, cause I was, I was the youngest. Um, my brother was born in 70. Um, and you know, so he was watching Def Jam all the time. So mm. I was, you know, I, you know, I'm an eight year old kid watching Def Jam. And, wow. So know, that got programmed into you. That oh, this is comedy immediately. And, but then I also really liked sitcoms, right? So I watched all the sitcoms. Fell in love with Seinfeld and it was over. Seinfeld was it for me. I'm wow. like this because you know, you know, at the beginning of every show, you see him at the club. Sure. And that was, I was like, this is amazing. So I, you know, knew, I was up to play Kramer. Isn't that crazy? That is hilarious. Oh, really? Yeah, I was. Uh, I went in for a few times to play Kramer, and the way it was written, I don't know if you remember the first episodes. The first year was awful, and you know there was no Elaine. And I th- to me, she's right. the best female in the no, history. She's of- great. In the history of comedy, she's the best actress. Wouldn't you say? She, she, ever. She's my favorite. Yeah. Veep. Uh, 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 she New is my Christine, favorite. The best actress I've ever seen, comedic actress. And on that show, if you watch the first episodes, there was a waitress, Lee Garlington is the actress's name, but there was no, and, and Kramer just walked into the door gently. That was all shtick that he developed. That was not in the original script. It was awful. Can you believe that? I remember I it was about socks missing in a dryer. I remember that, yeah, yeah. And it, that's what the episode was about. Yeah. And it was much more tailored to his stand-up. You were saying that's yes. what you got into. But if you noticed, as the show went along, the show had nothing to do with what he was saying in the beginning in the no, stand-up. No, no. Right. It evolved. It evolved, it evolved into time. that, yes. But, uh, so you're, yeah. you're connecting with that, which, you know, is a little unusual that you're not watching, you know, a show with it features like Fresh Prince or something like well, that. Well, you know, I did. I watched all of, I watched all of the sitcoms. That one just stood out, stood out for me because of the comedy right at the oh, beginning. Oh, God. Like, yeah. Jerry's, Jerry's comedy was just amazing to me i'm like this is i watched more seinfeld episodes strictly for that beginning part to see his stand up than anything you yeah. know what i mean it was in, that was good has supernova show. ever reached out to seinfeld or you have all these big stars i've done mean. my show at gotham i, I started the show at gotham comedy club that's still there every tuesday called comedy juice it's still there but he's done that a few times yeah mm-hmm. yeah you Jerry's reach out to him or his agent no yeah no totally just just he popped on and then and we like tweeted out. How does that start. work? Tell people how it works if people are listening. If are someone watching. pops on? Yeah, I mean, how does Seinfeld end up on your show, Comedy he comes, Juice? He comes on Tuesday night. We just made it the best show. It, it, it took years to get three and a half years in. They're like, we're going to cancel if it doesn't get busier next week. And then I hired this other promoter, Chris Milhouse. We started working together, and he and I just together just made it the best show in New York. At Gotham. And, at Gotham. Which is a beautiful still, club. Yeah. yeah. It, it's still there technically. I think it might be winding down because everyone's coming out of the pandemic, so they're going to be doing a different business model. I left it like maybe four. But how does Seinfeld he finds obviously out finds, the, out about finds out about it? Finds out it's the hot show, or, or just right? pops in on Tuesday and goes Tuesday, and then we're, we're here every Tuesday. I mean, tell me how that works. So he pops in, oh, like he comes, he does he no announcement, no announcement, walks, walks in, in totally, and he's does he, he say hi? I'm Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. That's a good impression. And he's he's gold there as far as like he's real close with those owners, so he knows oh, he can come in. So and he calls like, the Mazzillis. I would say that's yeah. probably his home club. Okay. Gotham. I, I think so. He's calling them and saying, "I'm popping in," and yeah, they they turn they to you. Secret. Yeah. They so you're not getting his t- his cell phone. No. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. No. But we tweeted. Out, this sounds so lame. We tweeted on. Started tweeting on. Then he started responding like, "Hey, we're back here Tuesday." He's like, "Oh," and we tweeted about his car. And then, oh yeah, yeah. And uh, so then he just found out it was there and just kept, kind of kept coming when he was in town. You check out. Is he following you back? We I think <laughs> maybe. But we also um, we became the show for the Saturday Night Live people too. Because oh. Tuesday, Tuesday nights are their big writing night, but it was also a night that we could get them a lot, the, the cast on Saturday because the Saturday was so far because it was Tuesday. So we had a bunch of comics from that, and then it became like the touristy place for if you want to see a Saturday Night Live cast member, you can come here. But also in New York, it's, it's actually kind of repetitive. There's actually less comics in New York, even though it's a comedy city. And so one of the big challenges when we started was like, hey, because uh, they tried it before and it failed before I joined that company, is like, 
hey, we're gonna have to get over the repetition of these, like it's too repetitive. So it became the place to see LA comics in New York on a yeah. showcase set. Yeah. So I just, every time, I would just keep up with people when they're going there. I would literally. And that's yeah. how we got connected. Yeah. Oh, that's how you got connected? Yeah. Well, so I, I had years, like, uh, like I said, I was in Ithaca, but when I would go, you know, to my dad's house in Queens, um, I would go out to the clubs just, you know, I'm nobody, but I was charming enough to talk my way in. I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I'm a comic. And they were like, they would let me in. Did you hear the underdog um, right there? Did you hear it? I look, I watched Craig when he said, I'm nobody. I watched his eyes dart too. I'm like, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't look to you. No, I, mean, I saw that. I saw it. I was over his shoulder. Go ahead. So, so and how, but how did it go your well, first time? Well, my first time went very well. It did? It went right because I'm a storyteller. Oh, so. let's go back to suffering. I, oh, I, I, okay. It's much more interesting. No, but no, so, you know, it's funny is I, I went to Gotham and I met um, Pete Holmes. And then I had, Brilliant. This, yeah, and Brilliant. Pete Holmes, was he was great. And I had never seen him before. I'm like, wow, this guy is really good. And clean. And, yeah, and I, well, yeah, at the time. Was he clean at the time? At the time. Yeah, okay. And I, Oh, he's you know, not now? You give a look like he's not now. Well, I mean, he he's going there. He's going. He's getting in. He's getting in what? The blue. blue. Oh, he is? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. He's, he's going blue, okay. A little bit. Um, right. It's good but, that he's killing him. I don't want to shoot him. No, I'm not, I'm not going to blow him up. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's great. He's developing uh, a new set on our show. Yeah. Oh, he is. He, he's going to Supernova. Pete Holmes is another yeah, one. We've got yeah. a bunch of, and he's going to be there tonight. I thought actually. his show on he's HBO is one of the best shows oh, it was great. ever about the crash. Was great. Is this going to be on yeah. tonight? Is what this is here now? Today? What? This, this podcast. No. 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 Yeah. no. Okay, cool. no, no you, right. You're way down the line. Got it. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, wait. Got it. I, no, nothing to do with you. <laughs> nothing no, to for do sure. No, no. Editing. We said that is said in jest, there is truth. And the truth is, yeah, I have a bunch in the bank that we're going Perfect. to release this week. We, we're switching over from my podcast, which I've had for years, to this Enlightened Up podcast, which is a lot about what we're talking about. Got it. What's behind the light? What's behind the comedy? What's behind the laughter? And we're essential workers bringing this out, and you guys do this all the time Yeah. Mm-hmm. with your supernova comedy show. Comedy show. And so, I have one more question because, oh, actually, we got to get back to – Charles, I oh. want to hear your debut. Oh, so even though I'm going to resent you for having well, it being no, the a good day, one. the debut. All right, well, no vomiting, no nothing. I don't have okay. to. Say, if you want me to get into the debut, or do you want me to get into all you know the stuff in the past? But the okay. the, the debut was at Ithaca College, and um, I had written a ton of stories that I always had. Like I, you know, writing was one of my majors. Like I created my own major. It was acting, writing, film studies, and then I did a legal studies minor. Um, but I had a bunch of stories that were funny. And it was mainly because I had developed my dad, like I said, would always let me watch comedy. Um, and one of my favorite comedians growing up as a kid was Joan Rivers, you know, mm. and, you know, and she was quite, fil- Machine. quite filthy, but yeah. she was Machine. Un- yeah. unreal. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I, you would watch a lot of Joan Rivers. So I would go to my friend's house down the street, one of my best friends growing up and eat dinner at his house with his family. And they would always ask me to tell a joke. They're like, oh, tell another joke, Charles. Tell another joke. And I'm like, okay. Some of them would be dirty. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but I would always tell jokes that I would that I, I had written or jokes that I knew that my dad had told me or jokes that I've heard from Joan. Um, you know, never a Jerry joke because I, ne- I just never thought I was as funny as him. And I was mm-hmm. like, I, I just can't do that guy. But um, when I first started out, I was t- telling stories and I was telling it as Seinfeld, like I had a huh. Seinfeld voice. You did, yeah. And you know, I went. It went well, but it could. It didn't sustain because I was like, I am not him. Because I tried to be clean, yeah. And I was like, I don't talk like that ever. So I'm like, this is. Just, it just yeah, felt yeah, unnatural. It's based on experience. It's not your experience. Yes, he grew up in the suburbs of of Long Island. Yeah. And- well, I mean, as did I. Like, I grew up in Brentwood. Long Island and 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 Queens, so you know we had a similar upbringing, but I just couldn't. He never walked outside and was threatened by no society. No, no, yeah, no. He had a, yeah, I mean, different lived experience, obviously. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what I'm saying. Is yeah, no, no, no. I get it's it. It's coming from a different. <laughs> it's coming from. A I, different get space. I get it. I get it. I get it. Again, yours comes from more pain of the big head. <laughs> oh, the big head, you know. A lot, and, of, a lot of thoughts bounce around up there. Yeah, and I know, uh, I a lot of thoughts. And I got made fun of. Um, I didn't come into my own until I was, you know, later in high school. Um, and, and it wasn't until, like, I looked in the mirror and I was like, you know what, you're a good-looking dude, let it go. That 
things started to like take off for me. Like Good. I had to so like you, believe you in myself. Developed your own self esteem. I think yeah. that's great. I we were man that went fast. <laughs> I mean, yes, I guess having two of you makes it go even faster. Goes fast. And uh, and the crack that's still kicking in uh, yeah. from the from All the right. uh, from All the right. late. He 80s. got paid in white. Don't forget. Yeah, don't forget those late eighties. Um, so I have one final question for both of you, and I'm sure you've been asked this before. There's something that comes again. This is a little. Um, under, no, we're not married. Uh, underneath comedy comes a lot of information for people who are hearing it for the first time. There's mm-hmm. there's things that which we talked a lot about today. Mm-hmm. Well, one of them is the booking of comedy, which you both do. But also what comes with that is sometimes people become bookers so they can get stage time, but they don't have the talent. Mm-hmm. Whoa. We know that. <laughs> we know we know those people. I've seen it. I've seen it. We've seen it. Right. Yeah. But don't you both have that? Don't you have that to, to go against? Yeah. When you're calling someone and they're, they're going, oh, you're on the show too? You know what I mean? And when mm-hmm. you're calling for a gig, same thing. You're going, oh, this guy's also a, a comedian. Also, is he just doing this because he wants stage time? It's the only way he can buy his way onto a stage? No. I try. What I try to do too is I look at the lineup and I go, if I wasn't booking and promoting this, where would I put me on this lineup? And how long would I do? Yes. Mm-hmm. And how many shows would I do? Because we do... What we're up to like six, set, set, six, seven, seven six. shows a, a week. I probably do four or five of them. I do like two wow. thirds of the shows, and Charles does about two thirds. Charles does a little bit more of the shows than me because he goes up first a lot too. Yeah, I, 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 I tend which to I rather, open, which I rather, and then he goes up first. And so you you do probably what three quarters of the shows, just probably about. More, yeah, totally. Now, now you yeah. opening with as you said, blue material. Is that a good setup for the if Seinfeld was on the show? Would you do blue material? If Seinfeld was on the show. Um, I would still do blue material. You would. I still would do blue material yeah. wow. because it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It hurts the audience if I'm not authentic, right? If I'm going to try to fake it into something good, that I'm not. Good point. not. It's not to say that I don't have clean material because I do. But if I'm going to do a set that I want, you know, to electrify the crowd or whatever to get everything started, I'm not going to, you know, mail it in with some something that I'm not comfortable with. Right. You know, so I'll do some blue material. You know, yeah. people ask me all the time, like, are you a clean comic? And I'm like, well, you know, I wash my ass every fucking day. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> but so I, I can't, I just, you know, can't let that go. He has that on his LinkedIn page. It's at the bottom. Yes. So you both are headline comedians who happen to book. I wouldn't also. say headline. I'm more of a feature act. I feature for people on the road. But cause yeah, you said you open for Adam Ray. Yeah, because to headline, I feel like you got to draw a crowd. Although, yeah, it's, and, I definitely travel a lot and thought that's what I want to do. But now with these shows in L.A., I go, okay, this is great. And so, yeah, but you do it for the stage time, too. That's, that's one of the benefits. I always tell, because a lot of comics, like, they keep asking for spots, spots, spots. I go, you know, if you develop a show and you, you book it and produce it somewhere, you can always book yourself. Always. So that's always a good thing. You know, so, yeah, it's uh, kind of. I just saw Jay Davis on uh, Jamie Kennedy's podcast. Yeah. He's one who's been booking for years. Yeah. And he was encouraged to do that by Dave Chappelle. Right. No, he was encouraged to do stand-up. But he ended up doing both. Right. He ended up doing, that's what he was saying on yeah. the podcast, he yeah. ended up doing the booking and that. I yeah. book shows for years as well. Yep. Yeah, I still do. I still book country clubs. A lot of times people will call me, and they they have no idea pricing of comedians. No. Oh, always God. go, oh, my uncle is, um, my uncle's. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> having a birthday coming up. And it's right. like, how much? And yeah, how much do you charge? That's yep. a difficult one. I'm sure yeah. you've had this. Yeah, Plus, all the time. And I say, what's your budget? I don't know what it is because they literally will offer something like, how about $50 and we'll give you dinner. You can right, eat with my uncle. You know, how would I, I burn the fucking building down? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a difficult thing, you know, when you're dealing with that. So do you have an agency that people can go to? You actually can promote it right now where they can come to you and they say, we would like to get some of the, you have access, major yeah, access. Yeah, I, could, I do. I've had that offered a lot. But you can go to my Instagram and do it through Mark Saratella, markscomedy.com. You can get to my social media. But kind of, no, I just kind of do it for myself. You know, I, do it I've, for ourselves. Yeah. I've had it, you know, but occasionally I'll have someone ask me for a favor like that. Yeah. Like there's a 420, <laughs> it's just a lie, it's so funny. There was a 420 event downtown that ha- asked me to help book it. And I did that, and I got pushed to mid-July, which is funny. That's don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did the 420 thing in mid-July. That's go, perfect. Yeah, okay, great. So, and I, if, if I like, if that was two girls I happened to like. They were really cool. They kept coming to the show, so yeah. I helped them with that. But overall, no, because there's so much communication anyway. And I really, it's it's a, it's yeah. overwhelming at yeah, times. Totally, so yeah, totally, yeah. Well, I'm but, glad you guys are bringing out comedy 
Thanks. You, you're, you're really delivering. It's wonderful. You both are great comedians yourselves. Thank you you surround Thank yourself you. with greatness, which obviously ups your level. It's yeah. like playing tennis. You want to play A well, tennis, you play with an A player, makes you better. It really Being does. on his show, so he had the hottest show at the Improv for years, and he would book me on the show all the time, and I, I would just come to hang out as well, um, you know, because we were really good friends, so I would just come and hang out, and he would always put me on. And at the time, nobody wanted to follow uh, Dalia. Nobody wanted to follow him. They were like, "I just no, no, no." And he'd be like, "Charles, go up after Dalia." Yeah. And it for years, and like every time I was there, like boom, I'm at, and that's so it helped build my confidence. Also, and it, the reason why I'm at the headliner caliber style of comedy is because of Mark's belief. Mark's like, "No, no, no, you're funny." You're a storyteller. Get up there. Kill it every time. And he would always, like, pump me up. Mm. And I would go after Dalia. And then one day I get off the stage and someone's like, dude, that must be tough following Dalia, but you killed it. Oh, my God. And I was like, Mark was right. That's like, nice to have a mentor like that, somebody who encourages you. I applaud you for doing that, Mark. It was more I was throwing, I never, I was throwing him to the lions. And I go, someone's got to do it. And someone, he eventually just got good at it. I go, it wasn't the plan. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would, not that here, I was bad here, at here it. Here we're no, ending no, no, the no. show at a sincere moment, but but Mark had to <laughs> had to tell us the truth of his motivation behind that was. So that somebody would be thrown to the lions that's after how you break Chris in, though, too, is, But that's if not you're willing it. to go anywhere. If you you have to be willing to do that, you have to be yeah. willing to bomb, and bomb. it's it's a it's very very tough on our egos. But I do think, on a sincere note, I think it's great to have mentors. I mean, I grew up in Philadelphia, yeah. no mentors. If you know what I would get, you know, don't fucking do comedy. I mean, right. no, <laughs> that's the encouragement yeah, no, yeah, I would get. Hey. Russell yeah. Brand has a great book called called Mentors. I just downloaded the audio. Yeah. Book. And he's and he's a genius. He really is. He's I mean, upper level. He really is. Yeah. yeah. I listened to his other book uh, about recovery on there for 15, 20 times, but then he has a new one called Mentors. Or I don't know if it's new or not, but I just yeah. downloaded that on auto on some. Oh, uh, thanks auto. for that suggestion. I think yeah. he is one of the most yeah. brilliant people out there. Yeah. And I say people. I can't bump him. I, agree, I, I agree with you. 100%. He's just he's just people. He's he's, he's got it all things. going. Oh, he's phenomenal. Same here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. The uh, oh, and, our, and he's enlightened. Way, yeah, he really is. Exactly, exactly. I aspire to be, if I have somebody I aspire to be, yours is Seinfeld, mine would be Russell Brand. I mean, yeah, because exactly. he brings it all. That's what we're trying to do with this show, by the yeah. way. Just so you know, Enlightened Up is really about finding enlightenment, which yeah. that's not on the agenda for comics. Mm -hmm. Comics, it's a lot about sarcasm, cynicism, you know, yeah. darkness. And then spiritual people, they think, oh, you know, namaste and all these like traditional things. I'm trying to make them lighten up. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm trying to have the comics realize we are spiritual people. We really are because we tell the truth. Right. Truth is spirituality. Yeah. It's yeah. connecting with your, your source and connecting with your true authenticity. That's what comedians do. That's what you guys do. And that's what I'm trying to do is build a bridge from the woo-woo to the ha-ha. Uh, awesome. That's what we're doing here on the Enlightened Up. It's not just about comedy, the inside. We've heard that before. You know, it, this is really trying to give people some skills and some tools for living. Yeah. You know, and now we're going to be out there. Now we're out there, and that's what this show is, prepping people. I had the best show of my entire career a few weeks ago. Where? Nice. Because it was a celebratory night where people went, went I crazy. said celebratory, like no, it's everybody's though. celibate, like nobody's celibate. getting late, although I don't get late anymore <laughs> anyway. But uh, you know, it, it, was, it was like that. I where? felt like I could lead people. It was an outdoor gig in Royersford, Pennsylvania called Soul Joel's. I don't know if you know about it. I'll turn no. you guys on to the gig. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get you booked there. Well, thanks. I'm real there tight with them. It's amazing. It's inside this like silo type of thing and it's outdoor they have sand and people bring their own lawn chairs well, so there's this vibe it's kind of like your thing you know yeah. it's kind of like supernova it's very unique yeah and all the big acts are playing it same awesome. as yours very and nice. it was unbelievable i felt like i could have led them into a river awesome. <laughs> you know, like i was like come on let's go you know let's let's do this together and that's what i want to applaud you guys for is we are in this together we are all one on this planet and we are doing this comedy for you, the audience, for everybody to embrace the comedy, not to resist it and cancel it, but let's go with it. This is a healing element. In our, in, we just don't give it, give it enough credit. You guys are bringing the best comedians. Are. So I thank you for being on our show. Thanks Never did this before us. with Thanks two of us. you. I had to have two. They yeah. insisted on it, folks. Mark Saratella, Charles Greaves. Thank you. How can we find you on social media? Uh, I am Charles Greaves on Instagram, um, Charles Greaves Comedy on Facebook, um, Charles Greaves Twitter. Okay. You find me everywhere, yeah. Maybe 
one of these guys will follow me back one of these days. Now you've been on my show. <laughs> Mark. Done, done. <laughs> I, uh, you like my stuff on Instagram. What are you talking about? I know. <laughs> you don't like mine, though. That's the I whole totally point. do, That's Craig. That. I love your stuff. I'm going to literally w- look now and see how Boom, many times. There it is. You better, right. go, you better go to the bathroom quick and get in there and start do liking the some stuff. the analytics and analyze it. Mark, can you stall for me real quick? I can, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so I grew up in upstate New York. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the shows we're talking about, the best way to fo- do, find out about it, it's in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, where Hollywood Boulevard meets Whitley, almost the exact center of Hollywood is the location. But uh, Supernova Comedy on Instagram. And we're about to buy supernovacomedy.com. By the time this comes out, it might be there. But th- that'll have our lineups. And then my, but my own personal stuff is markscomedy.com, M-A-R-K-S comedy.com. And my, uh, all my social media is on the front page. You can just click on it. Follow that, folks. And uh, you will be following yourself to a lot of laughs, a lot of levity, which is what this show is about. Hope you had a great time today and uh, spread the word. You know, download and review and rate and all the stuff that you do to help us out because this is what we want to do. We're starting a movement here of laugh, a laughter movement. That's the party we all belong to. It's an all-inclusive party. Unlike any other religion, under any other politics, laughter is is an all-inclusive party, and that's what we want to invite you into that party. Also, just remember one thing, and lighten the fuck up, all right? See you next time. Wow. (laughs) Awesome. I like it.